you got one chance. Come on, everybody, just lift your hands. Let's go. Come on, say shout out to God. Come on, make some noise. Come on, what you come to do, y'all? Everybody on my 
resurrection good morning, morning. y'all look so good yeah. we just want to give you a taste did y'all y'all like praise and worship with us this is how we get down in the youth church okay so for all those of you sitting in here come on and be with us or come on to youth church all right first and foremost we just want to welcome the extended welcome to all do we have any first time guests in the house can you wave your hand for me please Woo! yes awesome we're glad you're here so you should have gotten a worship guide. If you have the worship guide, there's a little tear off. If you take that time to fill it out, tear it off, turn it into the guest services at the very end of service. We'll give you a little token of our love, the free gift to you. Um, to our people, all of our friends and family in the video venue, we want to give you a shout out as well. All right. And then to all of our streamers, we want to go ahead and take this time to shout you out as well. We have... Tiara Mitchell from Virginia State University. We got a millennial, y'all. Uh, Marquita Houston from San Antonio, Texas. And then we have Miss Sheila Beard, San Antonio, Texas. Y'all give it up for them. So at this time, we want you to stand up, greet your neighbor, give them a hug, yeah. a kiss, show them some love. Yeah. Come to do. I don't know what you 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 come to do. Well, I come to clap my hands. My hands. 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 I come to clap 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 my hands. I don't know what you come to do. 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 Say you and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. Say you and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. Well, I come to lift him up. I come to lift him up. To do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Yeah. I don't know what you come to do. Say you and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. Say you and you and you and you. <laughs> you and you and you and you. Well, I come to do my dance. My dance. 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 I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. I don't know what you come to do. Say you and you and you and you. You and you and you and you. Say you and you and you and you. You and you and you. I come to climb my head. Resurrection family, 
Are you curious about discipleship? Do you want to learn more about what the Great Commission means and how to accomplish it? If you said yes, then the evangelism process is for you. Beginning September 11th, classes will be held on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. at the Schertz campus. Don't miss this opportunity to learn how to be a disciple for Christ and continue to build God's kingdom. Who do you say that I am? When I think of myself, I know exactly what you see. Every flaw, every blemish, the scars of my hurts and my mistakes, the things I've done to myself, the things that have been said and done to me, that's who I am. Haven't you heard? You are not what everyone says you are. You are who God says you are, and you are His. He says you are fearfully and wonderfully made. He says you are a perfect design, made for a purpose, made for a destiny, and you are never alone. He says he'll never leave you nor forsake you. He goes before you. He goes behind you. He says you are bold. He says you are brilliant. He says you are brave. He says greater is he that is in you. You are a masterpiece, hand-painted by the master himself. You are who God says you are. Hola, ¿qué tal? Dios te bendiga. Hello, God bless you. Soy el pastor Milton Soria de Resurrection en Español. I'm Pastor Milton of the Spanish Church of Resurrection. Y queremos darte las gracias. And we want to thank you. Por todo lo que haces por esta iglesia. For everything that you're doing for this church. Creemos que esta iglesia es de bendición. We believe that this church is a blessing. No solamente en este lugar. Not only in this place. Sino también en todo el mundo. But if not the whole world. Y queremos enseñarte algunas imágenes. And we want to show you a few images. De algunas cosas que Dios sigue haciendo en México. About some things that God is still doing in Mexico. Este domingo 19. This Sunday on the 19th, eh, se entregaron 65 mochilas we gave 65 backpacks a niños de bajos recursos to kids with low incomes. y se les ha entregado and they had also been given para el regreso a clases. For their back to school. Así que Dios te bendiga. And so God bless you. Sigue apoyando continue supporting y sigue orando por la visión de nuestro Pastor and Brown. Continue praying for the vision of our Pastor Brown. Así que Dios te bendiga. So God bless you. Y gracias por todo. And thank you for everything. You know, giving is such a powerful seed, but only 20% of those who attend service give. That same number are generally core members who serve the church faithfully. But what do we do about the 80% who aren't giving? Filling the Lord's storehouse with tithes and offerings is an act of obedience. If the process isn't easy, some potential givers may lose heart. Carrying and using cash and checks is flown away as a true convenience. Existing online and mobile applications are dated and need to be simplified. Who wants to stand by waiting for change when your life at home really needs you? The giver needs the right to make a choice before they completely give up. This is the giver at Resurrection. The giver will now find push pay at every Resurrection service on both campuses. It's a 10 second giving app. With push pay, the giver can make an online gift or at a kiosk at the church or by texting the church's name on a cell phone. Let's say we start off on a laptop. The quick and simple process can be done in 30 seconds. Right after that, givers are then invited to sign up and download the PushPay app. Then giving can be done anywhere at any time in just 10 seconds. Make it a reoccurring gift using any debit or credit card available. ACH gifts are also accepted. Over in church finance, receiving your gift is just as convenient because PushPay integrates with the church database. That means a giver's records are updated and reconciled against their profile. Now we can increase the number of givers at resurrection and watch the hand of God in all we do. By the way, we've dedicated an entire page on the Resurrection website where you can give at any service on any campus. If you need to change the way you give, instructions are in place. And if you need to read 
biblical principles on giving, that's available for you too. Plus, frequently asked questions and more. Use the power the Lord gave you in giving today. That's all for this week's High Res. Please stay connected with us on Facebook, YouTube, our website, and our church app. Don't have the app? Download it from your app store today. Be blessed and enjoy today's service. remix rally, our back to school remix rally. And we just wanted to show you um, as a church, just a recap of that and show you that this youth ministry is indeed on the move. We had a, have a video we want to show you at this time. As you saw, the youth are on the move. We are so grateful for the youth ministry being remixed, literally being remixed to make it an even better experience for our students. And this whole concept of remix really just stems from the fact that we recognize that Jesus is the ultimate mix master. He can take your broken life and mix it into something beautiful. And so that's what we celebrate. We acknowledge him. We thank the Lord for what he does. And these young people are leading the way with that. I want to pause just for a moment and just acknowledge staff members that are working with your young people. We have several volunteers, but at this time, I just want to acknowledge these staff members. Jamie and Alexis are working with... And then Miss Glennis, come on, y'all, let's celebrate, is working with them. These are staff members, staff members. We have several volunteers, but these are staff members that are working with them alongside. I'm just trying to help and guide in any way that I can, but they are the ones, they are your points of contact, um, and we are, they are doing a tremendous job in making sure that this youth ministry is remixed. Amen. And we thank the Lord for them. Come on, y'all, let's celebrate them. And all volunteers, if you're a volunteer, just wave your hand. I see a few. There's volunteers all over. So many people are pouring into our young people, and we thank God for them. They are coming to minister to us in song, but I wanted to make sure that I introduced the preacher of the hour. The preacher of the hour, we have a preacher in the house, 
And the person is a Pastor Tony Sanders. He is coming from Omaha, Nebraska. See, I told y'all it was more of us there. <laughs> I told you. There's proof that there are more of us there. We thank the Lord for him coming. He is from the Koinonia and Friends House of Worship there in Omaha, Nebraska. He is a pastor there. He worked with youth for years and now serves helping out fathers and parents and families in serving the youth even there in Omaha, Nebraska. But he is a senior pastor, a preacher of the gospel, and we look forward to hearing him. So the next voice that you will hear after this choir comes and sings will be that of Pastor Tony Eugene Sanders. That's my, by the way, you all, he's my cousin, so I can say his middle name, Tony Eugene Sanders. Let's stretch our hand to him and say, God bless you, Pastor Tony Eugene Sanders. Amen. Wow. 
next song right here yeah it's ministered to me for a long time it's you know it's I've had some tough times you know no matter how young I may be but it has ministered and it's given me it's given me you know affirmation that God still loves me and that the victory is in him
taking a test that consistently, every single time, Jesus made a way out of nowhere. He's been pulling you through and pulling you through. And when you look like you couldn't make it, he always hit you on his wing and said, you are chosen, you are mine. And the victory. Victory belongs to Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Victory belongs hey. my favorite. It goes like, victory belongs yeah. to you. Victory belongs to you. The victory belongs to you. The victory belongs Let us pray. Our God, our Father, we come before you as we submit ourselves and surrender ourselves unto you. You're an awesome God. You're a great God. You're a wonderful God, majestic and marvelous in all your ways. We love you and we bless you and we are appreciative for the fact that you have smiled upon us yet once again and allowed us to come into the house of worship to collectively worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, dear God, we pray even now that as we move forward in this preaching and teaching occasion, that God, you would speak to us as you speak through me. I pray, oh, dear God, that you would use me as your instrument, your vessel, your ambassador on this morning. That God, my mind and my body and my vocal cords and my gift, everything that I have, I submit and surrender unto you and ask you to have your way in me, through me, even now. Now let the me inside of me sit down. The you inside of me rise up, and you go forth to deliver this mighty message in the marvelous, majestic name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody together said, amen, amen, and thank God, amen. Good morning, church. This indeed is a day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. And I just have one question for you. Is there anyone who's excited about being in God's house? Amen on today. Praise God. Come on, you can do better than that. Are you excited about being in God's house? He woke you up this morning, started you on your way. Hallelujah. And kept you and clothed you in your right mind. For that we ought to be grateful and thankful and appreciative to the Lord. Amen. Give an honor to God. And also acknowledging your pastor, amen, the angel of this church, Pastor Brown, amen, good brother indeed, so appreciative for his friendship and for the opportunity to come and share on this great uh, morning, amen. Also want to acknowledge your executive pastor, Pastor Anthony Craig Cobbs, amen. <laughs> 
Hallelujah. Indeed, a good brother as well. And I'm so appreciative for his friendship and for him um, coordinating and um, orchestrating uh, me coming and sharing on today. I pray that's right, Craig. Suck that in and let it just... Hallelujah. Pastor Craig. Amen. Uh, but indeed, um, it's a privilege and honor to be here. Um, my son was here at the first service. I don't know what happened to him. He must have got lost, but my son is here with me on today. Tony E. Sanders the third. We call him Trey. Amen. And grateful for him. Um, I believe in doing what I've been asked to do and getting out of the way. So can we get right to the word of God? We thank God for those young people on today. Um, amen. They did an outstanding job. Being a former youth pastor, my heart goes out to youth and um, have a passion for youth. And um, I almost started to get up on stage with them and start shooping. Amen. My one, they was doing the hey, they was, they was getting it. Amen. Every time I, every time you see me, amen. Praise God. But anyway, let's go to the Word of God if you don't mind. I want to draw your attention to an Old Testament passage found in the book according to 2 Samuel. I had a different message for this um, second service. Um, I wanted to share something specifically to the youth and with the youth, um, but God just kind of just pressed on my heart to, to keep um, it where we were this morning. Amen. So I'm going to be obedient, and we're going to go back to 2 Samuel, if you don't mind. 2 Samuel, the 13th chapter, and also from the 14th chapter, what I'm going to do extract is extract a few verses, amen, from these two um, chapters and from this narrative. Don't have time to really deal with it in its entirety, so we'll just make reference points, and then we'll make it do what it do. Is that all right? Amen. amen. If you would please stand up on your feet as we go to 2 Samuel, the 13th chapter. I'm reading from the New King James Version. I believe also um, it's on the screens. If you have it, please say amen. amen. If you're still looking, say, wait a minute. All right, we'll wait. Amen. Can't wait too many minutes. I'm, I'm on a time limit. Amen. Hallelujah. If you have no idea where it is, say, Lord, have mercy. It is not a sin, nor is it against the law to look at your table of contents. That's what it is there for. Amen. Hallelujah. Second Samuel, the 13th chapter, verse 28 in particular. Uh, 38, excuse me, pardon me, 38. It says, and Absalom fled and went to Geshur and was there three years. Amen. And then if you would turn over to, to the 14th chapter, you would drop down to the 21st verse, and it reads, and the king said to Joab, all right, I have granted this thing. Go therefore, bring back the young man Absalom. Drop down to 23, it says, so Joab arose and went to Geshur and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. 24, and the king said, let him return to his own house, but do not let him see my face. So Absalom returned to his own house, but did not see the king's face. Verse 28, if you would drop down, it says, and Absalom dwelt Two years, two full years in Jerusalem, but did not see the king's face. 29, therefore, Absalom sent for Joab to send him to the king, but he would not come to him. And when he sent again the second time, he would not come. 30 says, so he said to his servants, see Joab's fields and is near mine, and he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servant set the field on fire. Then Joab rose uh, and came to Absalom's house and said to him, why have you set my fields on fire? And Absalom answered Joab, look, I sent to you saying, come here so that I may send you to the king to say, why have uh, I come from Geshur? I would have been better for me to stay there. Now, therefore, let me see uh, um, the king's face. But if there is iniquity in me, let him execute me. Verse 33, so Joab went to the king and told him, and when he had called for Absalom, he came to the king and bowed himself uh, on, to his face, uh, 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 bowed himself on his face to uh, the ground uh, before the king, and then the king kissed Absalom. Verse 30, for special emphasis, so he said to the servant, see, Joab's field is near mine, and he has barley there. Go and set it on fire. And Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Yes, he is a rascal. Amen. I want to use as a topic in the title this morning, fields on fire. Amen. Fields on fire. You may be seated in the presence of our Lord and King and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. I've been blessed and fortunate um, 
to pen and author and publish my first book. Amen. It's entitled Daddy Talks. Um, last year on Father's Day, I released this book, and I'm proud to say that it has since um, become an international bestseller in several countries, several categories, and was nominated for a Pulitzer Prize Award. Amen. And uh, God is just blessing all around the country um, this book and these efforts as we attempt to work with fathers. Also wrote a book, and it will be published this upcoming um, fall, entitled Mommy Talks, because many mothers were purchasing Daddy Talks, and so we wrote a book entitled Mommy Talks, Raising Sons Single-Handedly, so they can um, have some instruction and direction on how to raise these young boys. I make reference to Daddy Talks because it is in the book that I highlight the fact that when fathers talk, the trajectory of the family is forever changed. And the cycle of silence is broken. In like manner, when they fail to talk, fathers in particular, great havoc is wreaked upon the family and the cycle of dysfunction is continued and repeated. In the book, it is a chronicle of conversations, talks, and teachings that I wish my father would have had with me. Growing up in a household where my father was not present, he was in and out of jail, involved in um, gangster and prankster and wankster activity and out there selling drugs and, and, and all of that, as well as my stepfather. So I grew up without the positive influence of a male um, in the household. And so um, as a result of thereof, I found myself um, oftentimes lacking when it came to instruction and direction from the male perspective. And there were things that I just flat out didn't know. And it caused and created a great deal of embarrassment for me because it was things I just did not know. And so, and so I, I, I had a fear, and my fear was that I would grow up and have children, and because it was not modeled before me, and because um, I was not taught and told certain things, I would not have uh, anything to teach and tell my children. It literally frightened me. And so, uh, because I didn't have a manual, and because I didn't have a model, I wrote my own. It's called Daddy Talks. And so Daddy Talks is a collection of conversations and chronicle of conversations of things that I wish my father had told me and taught me. So I, in turn, have told and taught my children. And most of, much of the discussion and training and teaching took place around the dinner table. As we sat and communed together, I would drop nuggets into their spirit and give them um, advice and direction. My brothers and my sisters, Daddy Talks, the book serves as a template that fathers and mothers alike can use to jumpstart meaningful conversation and engagement and positive interaction with their children. You'd be surprised at how many people don't know how to interact with their children other than bellowing out rules and regulations and, and commands and, and what have you. There's so many parents that are lacking um, the tools and the skills uh, of just having meaningful conversation conversation with their children and being involved and engaged in their world which draws me to the text for in this episode of King David's life captured in 2 Samuel we see the damaging and devastating effects of what could occur when fathers do not talk and are not actively involved and engaged in the lives of their children David serves as a, a great example of what not to do and therefore gives us a template of what we should and must be doing when it comes to paternal parenting. Are y'all hearing me on today? All across this world, we are ex experiencing and witnessing the aftermath and the ill effects of fatherlessness. Yes, we are. Youth are flooding the juvenile detention um, system and centers because of their delinquent and destructive behavior. The fields are on fire. Though nationally, teenage pregnancy seems to be on a decline, um, STD diagnosis and promiscuity continues to reach all-time highs. The fields are on fire. Many of our youth regularly self-medicate themselves as they attempt to deal with the various vicissitudes and pressures of life. 
to the end that they find comfort and are most content in casual use of marijuana and other illicit drugs, not caring, not thinking of the impact, the negative effect and impact that it has upon their lives and upon their bodies. Again, uh, the fields are on fire. Youth are turning to gangs and have made a pact with um, street life, glorifying death and deviant behavior. With very little concern of the pain, misery, and suffering caused and brought to others. Yep, you ought to have it by now. The fields are on fire. So I, I, so I know, I know some of y'all are looking at me saying, okay, pastor, that's wonderful. That's great. That's poetic. You did your homework and um, we, we like what you're saying, but tell us something that we don't know. Yeah, uh, uh, I hear you saying um, what you're saying, uh, but and you've made great points, and, and much of this we already know. We're aware that the fields are on fire. We're aware that our kids are wilding out and cutting up, but we want to know from you, Mr. International Bestseller, Mr. Daddy Talks, how do we put the fires out? Is that, is that a question that's on anyone's mind? Are you curious, the least bit interested in finding out some suggested resolve and, and what that looks like as we attempt to address our children, minister to our children, and extinguish the fires? Are you asking what the solution is? Well, I'm glad you ask. You ask great questions. Well, I stopped by on my way to heaven by way of Omaha, Nebraska, amen, to tell you that the way that we extinguish the fires in the fields is by, number one, returning to faith in God. Okay, so I know some of y'all was looking for something that was a little bit more profound, something a little bit more poetic, something a little bit more prophetic, amen, but that's the problem with many of us today is we're looking for something deep and looking for something prophetic and poetic when it's very simple, it's right in front of our face. If we learn to turn back toward God and put God first and put family first, amen, and put things in their proper order, we'll begin to see a resolve and we'll begin to see a change in our families, in our community, in our our society and in our world return to faith in God my friends biblical family structure as we once knew it is a thing in the past I'm sad to admit the family unit has devolved and has been divided into multifaceted distinctives and resembles nothing remotely close to what God originally established now, I'm not trying to be insensitive, and I'm not trying to be intolerant, and, and I'm not trying to be divisive this morning. But when the family devolves and when the family dissolves, so does society as a whole. And we are indeed witnessing just that, for our society is distancing itself further and further away from Judeo-Christian morals, values, and principles, and seems to be void of possessing a moral compass, giving us direction and giving us guide. Are y'all praying with me on today? Church, we must get back to our biblical roots, and parents in particular, fathers must get back to leading their families in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Our careers and extracurricular activities have trumped our spiritual commitment. And instead of God being the head of our lives and fathers being the head of our homes, we've changed the family structure and made God secondary. And in many cases, there are no traces of God. God can be uh, nowhere found in many of our households and, and the truth be told in many of our churches. Oh, my friends, Christian missionary James Hudson Taylor said it best when he said, if Christ is not Lord of all, he is not Lord at all. That was a good place for an amen. Hallelujah. If we want to see healing in our families and in our society, we must return to faith in God. Let the church say, return to faith in God. Yeah, we must return. Uh, we, we find in the book of Judges, we, we witness the sad reality that there arose a generation that knew not the God of Israel and all the great things he had done. 
And I'm sad to admit here today, resurrection, that we uh, uh, find ourselves in a similar situation where we are fourth and fifth generation, um, uh, we're witnessing fourth and fifth generation heathens. Amen. Folk who don't know God. Folk who couldn't tell you the first thing about God, who couldn't tell you anything about Scripture, couldn't tell you anything about Bible verses. They can tell you all the words to Nicki Minaj and Drake and, and, and tell you all about the Kiki key key Challenge and Level Up and all that other carrying on. But when it comes to Psalm 23 and Psalm 27, John 3:16, any of the Scriptures that many of, of us learned as a young child growing up, they couldn't tell you any of that. They don't know God. And the sad reality is our, our, many of our parents are not teaching them and training them up in the way that they should go. Uh, 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 the sad reality is we give them too many choices. And one of those choices is whether or not they want to come to church, whether or not they want to go to vacation Bible school, whether or not they want to sing in the children's choir, go to children's church, and be involved in youth activities. That is a choice we ought not give them. If we don't believe they have the cognitive ability to make other choices, then why do we give them the ability and the freedom to choose when it comes to God? We need to train them up. We need to teach them so that when they grow old, they will not depart. Preach, Pastor Sanders. I'm doing the best I can. So if we're going to extinguish the fires, number one, here's my first point for those who are taking notes. Here it is. If we're going to extinguish the fires that are in the fields, we must remember, or we must, my brothers and my sisters, return, amen, to faith in God. But in returning to faith in God, we must be mindful. We must remember that God is our hope and God is our help. It's only so much that, that Dr. Phil can do. <laughs> it's only so much that our therapists can do. I'm not knocking therapists. Some of us need therapists. Amen. Some of us need to go and see trained um, um, psychologists and psychiatrists. That is a notable and a worthwhile field and industry. Some of us need to go and talk with them and get some of our problems out. Oh, my brothers and my sisters, but don't minimize God because while you're going to your therapist paying big dollars and laying on the couch, some of our problems can be solved if we learn to lay on the couch of God's throne and cast all our cares and all our concerns upon him. Why? Because he cares for us. We need to remember that God is our hope and God is our help. And I'm convinced that perhaps David didn't remember that. Um, perhaps that I'm convinced that David, though he was great in many areas, he failed and flunked at home. And, and, and we see and we witness how he, uh, you know, was, was so instrumental in leading the children of Israel and doing great things on behalf of God. But he failed when it came to raising his family. My brothers and my sisters, not only do we and must we uh, return to the faith in God, but we must also restore fathers to the home. Oh, that was, a, that was your cue to shout right there, and you missed it. It flew right over your head. We need to shout over the fact that we need more fathers to return to the home. David, while he was out fighting, while he was out kicking it with Bathsheba and doing all the things that he did, amen, he forgot that he was needed at home. He forgot that his children needed him at home. And so what I want to suggest to fathers, fathers some of y'all are doing a great job. I'm not talking to you in this particular instance, but for those of us uh, uh, who, who need just a little bit more encouragement and direction and instruction, let me give you these few little nitbits and I'll be out of your way. Fathers, uh, if we're going to restore fathers to the home, Home, fathers need to number one um, stand up father stand up we need more fathers to stand up and then standing up what I mean by that is you have a role and you have a responsibility and you have rights as a father as the biological father of that child and or children you need to be involved and engaged in their lives that is not an option it's not an option for the mothers it ought not be an option for the fathers fathers we need for you to stand up you don't have the right to walk away and say not today you don't have the right to say I don't feel like it I'm not feeling it I'm not ready for children if you weren't ready for children, then you shouldn't have did what you did to make the children. Have I got a witness in here on today? Fathers, we need for you to stand up. Let the church say stand up. 
and take your role and take your position and get involved in the lives of your children because their lives are literally depending upon it. But not only do we need fathers to stand up, we need fathers to step up. Let the church say step up. And when I say step up, I mean step up to the plate. I mean step up and be involved and engaged. When I say step up, I mean to make certain that your kids have no needs. There is no reason why a father ought to be sitting at home playing Xbox all day and playing games and running around um, chiefing and doing all the things that he does and kicking it at night and so on and so forth when his child is suffering, when his child can't read, when his child is struggling in school, when his child is in and out of the juvenile justice system, when his child is wilding out. You don't have a right to kick it and chill. We need for you to step up. Brothers, step up. But then we need fathers to step it up because some fathers are doing something, but they're not doing enough of those things. Amen. And you're saying, well, as long as I'm giving them a check, then they ought to leave me alone. No, 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 my brother. You got it all twisted. You need to understand that while yet they do need your child support check, what they need is support for the child. Amen. They need for you to check in up on them. They need for you to check on them in school and check on their health and check on their mental status and check on their physical status and check on them while they're in the community and check on them while they're trying to maneuver through life. We need for fathers to step it up. We need you to do more than just send a check. We need you to check up on it. But then fathers, we also need for you to speak up. You cannot afford uh, to be silent. The children need to hear your voice. For when the father speaks, life's change. Daddy talks, it's a double entendre. What it is, it's a, it's, a, it's a collection of conversations that this father had with his children. But what it also is, it's a charge and a challenge to fathers to break the silence and break the cycle challenging fathers to talk. We need you to talk. Have conversations with your children that are meaningful and speak into their lives. And David missed the mark here. Uh, David had many children, but I'm going to focus on three. Three, Absalom, Amnon, and Tamar. And Amnon, uh, he, he, he had it bad for his sister, his blood sister, the daughter of David. And he said, I want her so bad that, that I can't even concentrate. I want her in the worst way. So he plotted and planned um, to get her. And so what he did, he played sick. He played sick. So he was acting ill and had ill intentions. And he raped his sister. Oh, if I can just pause parenthetically. Sisters, watch out for brothers who are ill with ill intentions. Watch out and stay away from brothers who are sick. Amen. And who have sick intentions. It's a whole lot of brothers out there trying to play you. A whole lot of brothers that don't want nothing from you except for what you can give to them and how you make them feel. Oh, my brothers and my sisters. This brother manipulated manipulated his way into the life of his sister and he raped her and then after he was done he said now go on about your way and she said brother don't do this to me she said what you've already done to me is bad enough but then to kick me out and throw me out that's even worse don't do that to me the bible says he hated her more than he loved her kicked her out slammed the door locked the door and his brother Absalom said man we ain't having that he said, bro, he said, we ain't having that. He, 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 he said, I'm going to kill my brother for what he did to my sister. But, but, but here's my point. The Bible says when David heard of it, he was grieved and angry because of what happened to Tamar. He was grieved and angry, but he didn't say nothing or do nothing. Fathers, and it's, we got to be more than in our feelings. <laughs> we got to be more than emotional. We got to be more than, 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 than been swayed by our emotions. He should have done something. That was a great time for him to speak up. Let the church say speak up. I'm speaking to some father here today. You need to make certain that you speak into the lives of your children. And when bad things happen to them, we need to make certain that we nurture them and cultivate and, and help um, them uh, and nurse them back to health. David missed the mark. And he missed the opportunity to do just that. And he missed the opportunity to, um, to reprimand his son. So Absalom took matters into his own hand. Absalom ended up killing Amnon. The Bible says once again, David was upset and hurt and mad and angry, but he didn't do nothing. 
That was a great time for him to go and check Absalom. Say, Absalom, I should have did what I was supposed to do, and I didn't do it, but that doesn't give you the right to go do what you did. And he should have dealt with it, but he didn't deal with it. And as a result, Absalom ended up running away. And for three years, he was gone. And then eventually, David was confronted and conflicted and convicted and then brought Absalom back home. But when he brought him back home, he didn't bring him into the palace. He sent him to his own home. And then Absalom lived in his own home for two years and never seen the king's face, never heard the king's voice. And he got mad. He was feeling some kind of way. He got upset. And if I can just pause parenthetically once again, perhaps I'm speaking to someone because there was no reconciliation, no real relationship, and no um, restoration you felt some kind of way and you decided and made up in your heart that you was going to seek revenge and retaliation and that's exactly what Absalom did. Absalom began to woo people and he began to manipulate people and got them on his side because ultimately he was going to take over the kingdom and so what he eventually decided to do is he eventually um, decided that he was going to raise up an army and go kill his father. His father was on the run and Absalom is chasing him trying to take his life. In the process, Absalom ends up getting caught in the tree, ends up being hung. Joab ends up taking his life, and there he is, dead. Dead. And David was once again grieved. David, you had opportunity to say and do something a long time ago. So, so, so what I wanted to give you before I take my seat, my brothers and my sisters, is this. The story ended in a bad way, but it doesn't have to end in a bad way for you. It doesn't. It doesn't have to be in, in a bad way for you. Uh, because what you can do is you can intervene and you can interrupt the process. Amen. And do what I've suggested in these few moments that I've been up here standing and preaching and teaching. And instead of waiting for things to get worse, you can decide that I'm going to step up and I'm going to step in. I'm going to do my part. And I want to say to you, we must also repair families. That's my third and final point. Mothers, you must step in. And, and because in the absence of the father, we need somebody to do something. It's not your role. It's not your responsibility to do it by yourself. You didn't make that child by yourself, but we need for you to step in. Amen. And, 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 and children, we need for you to do your part. Level up. <laughs> we need for you to level up. And instead of using as an excuse, well, I didn't have a daddy, and I grew up in a single household, and this and that. Don't use that as an excuse. I grew up in a single household. I grew up without a dad involved in my life. Statistics suggested that because I grew up in poverty, grew up in the projects, grew up around pimps and players and prostitutes and drugs and all of that, that I would end up going down a certain path. But I made up in my mind, I'm not going to be a statistic. I'm going to change the statistics. And what I decided to do is what they didn't do, I'll do opposite. I'll be a father to my children. I'll be a good husband to my wife. I'm happy to say that today is my 23rd wedding anniversary with my wife. We've been married 23 years, together 28 years, and I thank God, amen, and ain't looked back yet. Hallelujah! We ought to learn, my brothers and my sisters, from the life of David, and if we're going to extinguish the fires, we must return to our faith. If we're going to extinguish the fires, we must restore fathers to the home, and we must repair our family. The fields is on fire, but you got the power to put it out. <laughs>